Hi, I'm Jeff with PowerLab. Um, I want to talk to you about control, the four of our five C's. Um, and control is really about understanding who you are as a runner and controlling just your training at, at the highest level and being a little bit more self-aware. So recently, one of my clients who, who took third in the Boston Marathon, I got to chat with um, previous Boston Marathons. Um, and he was, we were just chatting about paces and easy run paces and tempo threshold paces and and I said, hey, well, what's what's your just relaxed easy run pace um, on an on a consistent basis? And he's like, ah, you know, it's somewhere between seven thirty pace, and if I feel like I need more recovery, it might even be closer to eight minute pace. Um, and I think a lot of us would be surprised by that because I think a lot of us recreational runners would say that our easy pace is probably even maybe lower than that at times, um, which is crazy, right? Um, but, but this is an important principle to understand that a lot of times um, we're not allowing ourselves the amount of recovery in those easy days necessary to do our hard days really well. And, and it's, those, the, it's the stress of these hard days that allow for the adaptation to occur um, um, over time that, that give us the gains that we look, we look for and, and, and seek. Um, and, and I want to talk a little bit more about that and, and, and learn how to control your motivation to be the best you can be with what we're currently capable of doing at the, at the time that we're training. Um, and this is really important. Um, and and this is, a lot of this work is done by Dr. Steven Seiler who, who looks at polarization of training. And he looks at breaking people's training down or understanding the, the types of training. What they found is, is that um, the best in the world uh, in, in endurance sports um, happen to do most of their training upwards of 80 and, and personally I know one person who's a world champ um, at 90% of their training um, at an easy pace um, which is pretty astounding I think that would um, and a lot of us might find that um, um, very interesting um, so um, if I were to break it down into three zones, okay, there's our easy run days, our easy pace, and that's different for all of us. There's our moderate or let's say tempo pace. And then there's our hard stuff, our intervals, our repeats type stuff that we do with workouts. Um, a lot of times unknowingly, um, we get stuck in what we call the dead zone of this moderate pace, okay? And um, um, a lot of it has to do with maybe the environment that we're training in, individuals that we're training with that kind of pull us into that pace a little bit. And we just start adapting at a pace that's just probably higher than what where we should be that allows for the appropriate recovery. Um, and, and the consequence of that is, is, is poor recovery, but the consequence also is, is that the quality of our hard work, hard, harder workouts may suffer, which then ultimately can limit our ability to make gains um, as fast as we want to. The other important factor of the easy pace runs is, is not only recovery, not only injury risk or, 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 or robustness or increase in robustness to tissue, um, but it's also just a, a more physiological response to um, buffering lactate, which is not a waste product, but a byproduct that we, that we accumulate um, with work. Um, increasing mitochondrial density, which helps us, which is kind of like the powerhouses of our cells. So there's a, there's a lot of importance of being able to do this easier pace work to prepare our body for this other stuff, okay? So how do we know if we're at the right pace? I get emails all the time 
and, and we calculate this in our product um, automatically based on all your historical data. And I get emails all the time saying, hey, my easy pace is too slow. And my response to them based on all their training is maybe your easy pace is actually too fast. And maybe you actually need to slow down a bit in order to speed up later on. And that's the paradox. Um, sometimes running at slower paces, um, we, we feel that that's going to inhibit our ability to move faster later on, but actually it, it, it optimizes our ability and it enhances our ability to do that work later on. Um, how do I know, self-test, how do I know if I'm at easy pace or what my easy pace is without having any access to data? Simple, if you're on an hour, hour and a half run with your buddy, can you hold a constant conversation without a loss of breath? That's your easy pace, the talk test. At moderate pace, you may be able to blurt out a few words and, or phrases, but it becomes very difficult to sustain that. At hard paces, anybody talking to you, you get completely annoyed because you cannot answer them. Um, and so that's the difference, that's one test. The second test, which I challenge you to try, which is actually really hard, is to run with, with your mouth closed and only breathe through your nose. Now, there's a lot of um, reasons why this may be hard for someone um, other than at the pace that they're running, but it's a great way to, to develop a better understanding where that easy run pace is, okay? What do the top runners look like in terms of their training? this massive amounts of of easy workouts with about 20 percent of all the other stuff what do most runners look like too much of the middle ground or or too much of the kind of the dead dead zone stuff where it's just hard to recover from and then we never really are able to optimize that quality of work when we need to optimize it okay so my challenge to you guys is is take these two self tests find out where that easy zone is or look in with look at look at power lab and, and it can help you um, kind of be more aware of what that potentially is and slow down in order to speed up it's okay to feel like you're running a little slow. It actually might even make you feel better.